Morning, everybody. Uh, I'm joined today by Tom Kerridge, who's a, a Michelin starred chef, a celebrity chef, uh, best selling author of books Tom's Table and Lose Weight for Good. Good morning, Tom. How are you doing? Good morning. Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks for joining us on the Drive Time Show. And we're going to be talking about food insecurity. So, obviously, you know, it's a big problem, uh, especially here in the UK and globally. Uh, but just before uh, we move on to that subject, you know, just for our listeners who might well be kind of living in the dark ages and who are unaware of you, just you know, give us a, a little summary of um, you know, your achievements in the culinary uh, arena. So I've been around in it for quite a while now. I've been cooking for over 30 years, um, mm -hmm. but I suppose the biggest thing was uh, nearly 18 years ago, I set up a small little pub in Marlow called The Hand of Flowers with my wife. And we were the first pub, um, we went from, we won a Michelin star in its first year, and then we were the first pub to win two Michelin stars. Wow. Um, and since then we've gone on and opened, we've got three sites here in Marlow, which is just outside of West London. We've got a place in uh, Manchester, and then we've got two sites in the centre of London, one in Harrods and one at the Corinthia Hotel called Carriages Bar and Grill, and an event company and a festival mm -hmm. company. And, um, so you've really so, stretched out. Exactly. So, yeah, so been in the industry for a long time and um, built a network of people around me. So I'm very fortunate mm -hmm. that I've got a great team of people that allow us to uh, make it, make, 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 um, the business be as diverse and, uh, and as, uh, I, I suppose, reach as many different spaces as possible within hospitality. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, you know, you're obviously, you know, we're all familiar with uh, that unfortunate terminology, you know, the cost of living crisis currently. And, you know, you've seen inflation going through the roof. I mean, the uh, Bank of England are predicting that it's going to hit somewhere around 10% uh, by the end of the year. But obviously, you know, when we're looking in supermarkets, there's certain... Uh, basic products, yeah, which are being hit even more. I mean, say for instance, pasta is you know almost doubled its price, yeah, uh, on the on the shelves. Um, I mean, do you have any tips for our listeners out there, for everyone? Yeah, you know, how can we, you know, just effectively use you know what little resources we have to you know to, to kind of navigate this, the, you know, these troubled waters currently? Yeah, you're right. It's very very difficult. Um, yeah, the rate of inflation at 10% is incredibly high, but real life cost of that is actually a lot more, mm. um, particularly on the staples, things like bread, pasta, anything to do with oils or flour or anything of those. And those are the products that many people that are living on in food poverty or right on that borderline of close to food poverty, where those kind of staples, those fillers, they're the ones that have massively and dramatically increased in cost, which has a huge bottom line effect on people's pockets. Um, in terms of how you move forward with that and what you do in terms of how you can, can cook better, how you can make food a little bit better, how you can make it go further. So the last year and a bit, I've been running a campaign with Marcus Rashford called the Full-Time Meals Campaign, which was mm -hmm. all about raising awareness for the healthy start vouchers that have risen in value to £4.50, uh, where it's if you uh, are... Um, liable for free school meals but your children are preschool age um mm. you get um you get this voucher that, uh that helps you per week um put towards things like pulses um milk milk formula um fruit vegetables um so to try and drive that increase um and awareness that it's there but then also create ingredient led um, recipes that are all about um, that isn't preachy. It's not about mm -hmm. it being um, this is what you need to eat to be healthy. Actually, this is what that may well be the only one meal that you can eat. You know, one of your child may well eat this. It may be the only meal that they eat that, that day. So mm -hmm. it's a trying to make it uh, substantial filling, ensuring that kids get something to eat. Um, and there's many different ways of doing it. And a lot of it, a lot of it again, will come down to where um, costs are higher using one pan, for example, mm -hmm. not necessarily having the oven on for too long. I mean, yeah, even like to one pot of meals. Yeah, exactly. Hot meals, but th th that doesn't take a, a lot of a, a lot of cooking in terms of um, 
one of understanding, but two of actually washing up pots, pans, clatter, mm -hmm. cutlery. This isn't about it being a cookery TV show that we might put together for, for a channel. This is mm -hmm. about it actually being the real, the real um, cost uh, and the real process of cooking. If you if you live in a space where you know it is a little bit more economically challenged and how you can make that work, whether it's using frozen vegetables, for example, mm -hmm. the huge thing, you know, if if you could, if you do have one of those freezer compartments in your fridge, keeping a bag of frozen vegetables in there makes a big big difference because then you're only taking out exactly what you need, you know. So the food waste is is much less. Using, tin, using exactly using tin produce, um, you, you know, all of the, those small little ideas of being able to utilize the food that you can get and use. And there's over 52 recipes. We did wow. one a week. We did one a week, which is great because the other thing that you we've got to be very conscious of is the fact that sometimes if you're trying to feed families and kids, not and it is literally the decision that you're making. This is the last bit of money that you've got that you can afford to cook this mm -hmm. meal. You want to make sure that people enjoy it. You want to make sure that yeah. it's something kids are going to like. You're not going to take the risk of cooking something. Not, it doesn't taste like cardboard. But yeah, or, or, or trying some, a new flavour for children to try. Mm -hmm. Because we all know what kids are like. You know, they have, you know, mm -hmm. most of mine included have beige taste buds. You know, they'll just go, mm -hmm. if they don't want to eat it, then you've wasted that last bit of money that you may have. So yeah. with 52 recipes, we try to make sure that they re they're they broad reaching. Um, they're, they're are, are, are these, uh, Tom, are these uh, uh, recipes available on your website? Is there a link that you can the get hold full, of them? The full-time meals, yeah, the full-time meals full campaign. Meals. It's been supported by Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so they're all online through Facebook and Instagram and that every single one is up there and, and on there. Mm -hmm. and that myself and Marcus Rashford have put together so you know it's it, they, they will all they will all help they will all help mm. Tom do you think it's a bit of an indictment on our society as a whole I mean the UK is supposed to be um, the sixth biggest economy in the world but I mean you know when you when you look at the other stats which balance that up um, you know we've got over 2,200 food banks in this country uh, and that was at the beginning of 2021. So that's gone up, you know, again, most probably in the last year. Um, the Trussell Trust delivered 2.1 million food parcels uh, in the period of 2021-2022. So, you know, we're supposed to be the world's sixth biggest economy, but we've got over 2,000 food banks. And then, you know, on top of that, um, you have Conservative MPs uh, making the comment that actually people can get by if they learn to cook. Yeah, it's disgraceful, to be honest, you know, we... we I mean, what's we, your we, opinion on that? We, yeah, well, my opinion is that we, we should, 100% should not be in this position. I think, mm -hmm. I think, um, I think we've seen over the, the last um, year in particular, or maybe two years, how disconnected from real life um, a lot of Conservative um, uh, members of Parliament are with... Mm -hmm hugely disparaging and ridiculous comments like that that people should just learn to cook i mean it's you know it's it's just unbelievable yes cookery skills will help you in that kitchen but it's not just that there, there's a confidence there's there's a cost related many people that find themselves are, are, are that are in food poverty or close to food poverty having to use food banks there's a time issue these, these are also people that are perhaps already have two jobs just to survive and are still having to use food banks there is not time to cook or to learn to cook or to you know there may be full-time carers there may be single parents there may be you know all of this is like the reality of life is something very very different to the world that some of the, the those uh, members of parliament live in or their perception of how we all live um, and how many people's backgrounds are my background the reason why i've been so involved with marcus rashford is my background is very similar to marcus's single parent family mm -hmm. growing up in gloucester my mum had two jobs to make ends meet you know, both my, my earliest experience of cooking was doing fish finger sandwiches for me and my brother. <laughs> back, back in my day, we were... Was it with ketchup, though? 
Exactly. Yeah, no, it was with Ted. <laughs> yeah. But we were known as latchkey kids back in yeah. those days. But you would have the key, you, you would come in, you would cook yourself tea at some point, your mum or whoever the guardian or parent was would come home later at night, you know. And, it, you know, the reality of life like that is how so many people are facing. You mentioned the food bank thing there. I mean, there's mm. more food banks than there are McDonald's. And I mean, that's just yeah. a disgraceful statistic. And it, I, I, funny enough, I visited a food bank um, a few weeks ago for part of the full time meals campaign. Um, we're working with Facebook. We were did we we cooked live on a cooking on a budget um, Facebook group of trying to just connect and cook uh, and show a very simple and quick pasta dish to cook on a budget. Mm -hmm. um, this single food bank in Harrow that we visited, which was, I mean, I, I, it, it was incredibly moving to be there. It, it was an amazing space. It was set mm -hmm. up. It was so slick. It was a wonderful, incredible operation. Um, but that actually makes it very sad that this operation has to exist and work yeah, exactly. so efficiently. And it, fe it feeds 14,000 people wow. per week, per week. Yeah. And that, I mean, that, is just shocking and mm -hmm. yeah we really have found ourselves in an, an awful situation where i do feel quite that that the, this government is very disconnected with the understanding of the situation that many many people find them in and then with the now the rising costs of fuel bills utility bills mm -hmm. and none of that is actually hitting anybody yet until october when the price cap will rise again mm -hmm. and because most people haven't got their central heating on right now most people exactly have, exactly it, it, you know it's not even we're not even in the worst of it yet so mm -hmm. it, it, yeah it, uh, in terms of um th this government's and this government's outlook and to how we operate and how we make it move forward i i have very little confidence in in their understanding that they understand the actual needs of many many people within this country millions of people in this country mm. and so you know with that comment regarding the government that they're you know uh, a lot of MPs are disconnected. Um, I mean, some would you know, totally agree with that opinion as well, right? You know, they themselves have given themselves a pay rise of over two thousand um, pounds. So it is a bit galling in, in terms of them asking us uh, to learn to cook. Uh, I think uh, George, uh, sorry, George Eustace even said, "Oh, maybe if we pick the value brands uh, in supermarkets." I mean, it's just, that that again is such a ridiculous statement. I mean, it's most people are shopping on those value brands already. Anyway, we're yeah. already there. We were, I mean, it's just miles away from their understanding of how people live their daily lives. It really, mm. it really is um, mm. a complete disconnect, and and, and that's where it, that that's where it is very frightening in terms of how things are moving forward. Mm. You know. So what, government really got control and an understanding of what's going to go on and how and how difficult it is going to be to maneuver and find our way through the mm. other side so so what could you suggest right um as because you know you have you have a big following as does marcus rashford uh and it's i suppose um, it's an unfortunate fact but it's it's welcome that celebrities are taking you know, to social media, to, you know, any kind of form of media they can get a hold of to, to you know, I suppose, underline this crisis that we're, we're going through in the UK. But what would you say to the government? Well, what can they do? Um, you know, or what more can they do to assist? I mean, we've had that uh, the Chancellor came out with giving us a £400 rebate, but that isn't until October uh towards your fuel bills and you know we've seen a lot of fuel bills actually going to be in the region of around about 800 pounds so you're only going to get i suppose a grant for half of that where are you going to come up with the rest of the money so what would you suggest to the government um i, I know it's a bit kind of like uh, the sixty-four thousand dollar question but i mean there's so many things i mean how would you know where where should they kind of like put their efforts in to help those who are facing this crisis at the sharp end of the stick. Yeah, look, I mean, for that point of view, I, I mean, I am a chef, not a politician, and, and I'm not the Chancellor of the Exchequer. However, mm. you know, this government always seems to be being uh, reactive to pressure, reactive to think rather than proactive. They don't seem mm -hmm. to be facing things head on. They're not forward thinking enough with an understanding of the problems that are being faced by many, many people, millions of people up and down the country. 
I mean, the one first thing that I would definitely that, that ha say that has to happen is to bring benefits in line with inflation. You know, mm. because if those benefit, many, many people are on benefit and, and benefit sounds like so, it, it, it often gets banded around as like it's a bad thing. But there's many, a stigma many, about it. Yeah, there's a stigma about it. But it's it's the reality of many people's mm. lives. You know, myself growing up, it's exactly the same. And these benefits are there to help people. They are to help people that are working. Working people are, mm. st you know, are still up against it, are still below the poverty, food poverty breadline. And, it, it, you know, if you are not, if benefits are not in line with inflation, all that's doing is massively affecting the poor even more. You know, with it, for many people like myself, you know, I recognise that I'm in a very fortunate situation that, you know, I've been successful in what I've, ch my chosen career, you know, and, and I, I'm in a lucky space that when I go to the supermarket, you know, w the bill will be higher, the cost yeah. will be higher, but actually bottom line affecting my daily life it probably won't affect it as much as millions and millions of people mm. and millions of those working people that are still <laughs> claiming and are on benefits and in need of benefits to, to exist on their daily lives. The least this government could do is to bring benefits in line with inflation. Mm. So, for instance, uh, the uh, £20 deduction in universal credit. I mean, again, the timing of that is just absolutely ridiculous. You know, we all saw coming out of the pandemic, we all saw the nightmare that was coming and they still decided to remove that. And it's just these sort of things that always seem to be penalising people that are struggling, that are up against it, that are economically in a, 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 um, in a challenged position. None of it seems to be um, on a proactive side. What happens is they react to to pressure from from uh, lobbyists, pressure from, <laughs> from pressure from the general public, pressure mm. from people like Marcus Rashford. Then they react to it to then try and clean up the mess that they've already made. You know, they're constantly U-turning and co they're never thinking about moving forward. And I mean, I think the tide is beginning to turn. I mean, the prime example is Boris Johnson turning up the other day at Jubilee mm. and getting booed by many, many royalists. But, but, but some, many some would say, some would say, Tom, that there were boos and there were cheers. I, I'm quoting Nadine Doris there. Yeah, some would, some would say that. Yeah, some, some would say that. <laughs> although most of us have eyes and ears, right? So yeah. Most of us were witness to what that. I'm sure there were a couple of cheers, and I'm sure most of them came from Nadine Doris. <laughs> yeah so i mean the thing is i i would say personally because you know i come from a cooking background as well yeah my parents had restaurants and stuff and i end up cooking and you know as a cook you know you can go to the you know go to the larder you've got cans you've got pulses and stuff and you can knock up something to eat so in some senses with lee anderson i can understand that actually having some um cooking skills does help but it actually doesn't actually help with the bill of getting to the supermarket, getting to the supermarket and seeing that actually some of the stuff that you want to buy isn't even there to start off with because there's a shortage. Um, and that, uh, like you said, the staples that you're looking to buy actually have increased. And although if you look at them individually, say, for instance, you know, Hearts of Romaine, they used to be one pound. Now they're one pound ten. So that's an increase of 10 percent. Right. Uh, and if you put that right across the board of your uh, your bag of shopping, then everything's increased. So it is. Yeah, it's a challenging time. Um, I mean, and but do you think that just increasing benefits in line with inflation? I mean, what more can the government really do in the short term? Because like you say, come October. So we're, we're in. Where are we in now? June, June, July, August, September, October, another five months time really something's going to hit the fan yeah i mean so much of it again is also to do with brexit for my industry not a single benefit comes out of brexit not one so if you're in hospitality so you're another you're another industry that definitely says that there are no positives from brexit because None the, brexit. the government would have us believe that you know there are sunny uplands somewhere most probably in europe yeah i, I mean for, for, from from a hospitality point of view there isn't a single benefit not not one you know, in, in terms of trade deals that we make with other countries, it's undermining British farming because, you know, we're, we're, we're trade deals. In, we talk about um, we removed ourselves from Europe so that we can increase the, the standard of British farming, which is fantastic. Is, is that we not do, true? 
that well no the standard of british farming can improve but what mm. happens is that that has a cost to it and it becomes british food becomes more and more expensive so that when then the trade deals that we make with australia america mm. india you know then the imports that we get can completely undercut everything in terms of british farming which then in turn it, 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 the quality of the produce the quality of the food coming through is is much much lower mm -hmm. which means that, that again the people that that affects are the people that are sitting there within that food poverty bracket that the, the mm. cheaper meats the cheaper products that you're buying is now even less quality than it was previously um in terms of freedom of movement of people staff shortage is huge for mm. our industry but for many, for logistics, for agriculture, fisheries, farming, so many, so many different industries have been affected by the freedom of movement for many, many European and transient workers that just aren't here now, that just aren't mm -hmm. coming back, that just can't get in because they're not seen as a skilled workforce. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you constantly see it with travel and airlines. We see it in the news all the time about baggage handling and, you know, mm -hmm. because that workforce just doesn't exist. So, and that then increases costs. So, you know, freedom of movement should be a massive thing that needs to be looked at in terms of people being able to move encouraging the skilled that that skilled um visa system it's it just doesn't work it's just mm -hmm. not right we need um we, we we need workers we need people here across mm -hmm. all sectors that you know straight away that helps release a lot of pressure on businesses that will get things moving again that mm -hmm. gets things uh, 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 which help, which will lower costs. But all at the minute, it feels like there's a huge amount of pressure and we can't kind of reverse any of the issues where there's a Brexit problem until we admit that Brexit is a problem. And at the minute, we have a government in place that won't admit that. Mm -hmm. no, excellent. Well, uh, Tom, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us on the Drive Time Show today. Um, and uh, fingers crossed, uh, your message will get through the, that fog uh, that seems to be uh, in front of our, 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 our nation's leaders. Well, thank you ever so much for having me on. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.